Good evening. I'm Shelly Aaron. I'm the superintendent of Palm City Public Schools. Welcome tonight to our 2024 Teacher of the Year celebration. And I would like to welcome our site nominees and their families. And we also have lots of principals and directors here and lots of co-workers and I even see some former teachers and administrators in the house tonight. Welcome, Mr. Woody. Before we get started, I do want to introduce you to our board members who are here, to, who are here tonight. We have our board president, Ms. Judy True. Judy, will you stand up? We have our board vice president, Ms. Anna Rowland. Former PCPS teacher. Oh, and Miss Troop was a former PCPS teacher as well. And we have Miss Nancy Zimmershe, member. She is a Pell High graduate. So is Judy. So thank you all for being here tonight. I want to tell you something about our board members. They are a huge advocate for our teachers. They want you to have the best experience because they want our kids to be as loved as they can by you. For every pay raise, for every stipend, for extra every extra duty pay, they have voted yes. So give them a round of applause. And I will tell you, it's their goal to keep moving that needle as much as possible to raise that salary. But on top of that, they also focus on making conditions just a little bit better for you. For example, how many of you enjoyed our fabulous calendar this year? A full week at Thanksgiving? Was it 11 days at Christmas? And guess what, guys? In about two weeks, we're going to have Good Friday, a true holiday. And as of, and as, as of this 10 seconds, the 10th, we're going to be off because it's a snow day and it may be the first time ever since I've been superintendent we haven't had an inclement weather day. But I'm knocking on wood because we do live in Oklahoma. So we're planning on it as of this 10 seconds. So uh, these board members are great. They want you to be your personal best for our students. They want to retain you in the district and they want to entice new staff to come to Ponca City Public Schools. So with that said, it leads me to the point of tonight's remark. At a time when being an educator is tough at the very best, you must find ways to stay motivated and take care of yourself while in this profession. During the pandemic, we experienced some of the most challenging times in education, ranging from complete school closure, distance learning, to constant isolations and quarantines. And guys, I think we all hoped that this year would be better, but those of us in this room know that both mental health and behavioral concerns are more urgent now than before the pandemic, and I see lots of head shaking and they're from our staff. Couple that with the pressure and the need to close student academic gaps, we are more drained than ever because we have little time to address the numerous concerns we are facing and teach the standards to our kids. Our weariness is not due, the, due to the physical workload, the mental workload is what's so challenging about being a teacher. It's invisible because it's expected and it's needed. Mentally, there is a silence on the outside and sirens blazing on the inside. Our brains continually sort, arrange, organize, balance, prepare, anticipate, solve, Squelch, remember, remember, and remember. It's like having 20 tabs open in your brain, and if you close one, you will lose them all. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Sometimes we just want someone else to make the list, make the decisions, 
deal with the thousands of things going on at once. It's not the doing that it's exhausting, it's the thinking that's exhausting. Mental exhaustion may be invisible, but it leaves visible cracks. It leaves no room for us to be in the moment, and we have to be in the moment to be our best for our kids. Remember, your role model as a teach, your role as a teacher goes beyond the subject matter you teach. In most cases, the subject matter is the least important. You are a mentor, you are a counselor, and you are a role model. Sadly, to many of our students, you are the most positive person they have, and the best part of their life is when they are at school with you. Never forget that fact. You have the ability to make a lasting impact on their lives, and that is a responsibility that should be taken seriously. Our children need you now more than ever. They need teachers who are passionate about their work and who are dedicated to their students. They need teachers who will inspire them, challenge them, and help them reach their full potential. Under the best circumstances, an educator's job is almost impossible. How many of you have flown before? Lots of people in this room have. Airline attendants remind us that when the oxygen masks come down, we need to take care, we need to put on our mask first so that we can take care of others. You need to prioritize your own mental and emotional well-being before you can effectively support your students. It's time to put on that oxygen mask. So tonight, I'm going to share with you four tips to take care of yourself to prevent stress so you can be the teacher our students need to be. First and foremost, and listen, I'm telling you, I do not do this very well, so I'm going to be preaching to myself tonight. Set and maintain boundaries. From planning lessons to calling families, your workload never ends, and it takes over your own life. It's important to schedule your day to include an actual end time as well as time for breaks and self-care practices. Set goals to finish a task and then do something for yourself. Finish grading that set of papers or writing that newsletter. Then go out and have a short walk or sit on the porch or read a book or just enjoy time with family and friends. You have to make time for your self-care activities. Guys, feed your passion. Recognize what makes you feel happy, fulfilled, or accomplished. Dedicate time in your day for that type of work, even if some may categorize it as a hobby. So things that you like to do for relaxation, your kids probably like that too. And, and guys, their, their brains are on a mental overload as well, so it's important to take those breaks. Take time to slow down and smell the roses so that you're not living in a constant state of mental overload. Number two, build human connections. I truly believe that human connections are going by the wayside due to the overuse of social media. I'm going to share a quote from a nearly 20-year-old movie called Powder. Has anybody seen the movie Powder? It's a story that encapsulates where we are, we are as humans and how we are headed for a very bad outcome. This was nearly 20 years ago. Here's the quote. It's becoming appallingly clear that our technology has surpassed our humanity. Too many of us are forgoing human connections and are relying solely on social media. And I'm guilty of this. It's easy to stay home, put on your most comfy clothes, relax, and scroll social media. You can find out all kinds of things on, about everyone. You know what they're doing, you know what's going on in their life, and in fact, we probably know more about people now than we ever have, and often way more than we need to know, but it's not a human connection. Take the time to connect with others. You can attend our extracurricular events. Make plans with friends or family, or simply make time for meaningful conversations. I'll have to say, there's a group of high school teachers, and some of them are in this room. The Thursday 
before we were out the Friday before spring break, six day spring break, thank you board members, some of our staff members at the, at the high school went to the teacher's spring break comic relief club. I was so happy that they were together and enjoying each other. Guess how I knew they were doing that? Facebook, social media. See, I knew that was going on, but they were having human connections. And I was wishing right at that moment that I was there at that comedy club with them. Uh, I sent you guys a message. I know you responded to. So how many of you take your phone out and automatically go to social media when you have time to sit down? I'm going to raise my hand. Oftentimes I do that. If I have time to sit down, I'm looking. Guys, social media is addictive. I would dare say that most of our kids and our teachers' emotional accounts are in the red. And if we want to improve our own mental health for ourselves and for our students, we have to be validated through human connections. Only human connections make us feel validated. Sometimes I'm so depressed after Facebook because everybody posts what's wonderful in their life. Guys, nobody has a perfect life. Sometimes it's depressing. Social connections are lonely, but human connections are comforting. Let's lead the way for the restoration of humanity so that humanity suppresses technology. Number three, this is not a good one for me either, but I'm working on it. Recognize what you can control and what you cannot control. With a rapidly changing world, it can seem like there are more questions than answers, and it causes worry and anxiety, not only for you, but it also happens for your students. Does anybody in here lie awake at night or wake up in the middle of the night and start worrying and you can't shut it off? I do that quite often. So if you really think about it, are the things you are worrying about things that you can control? If you're like me, the answer is a whopping no. I usually wake up thinking about what if this happens or what if that happens. And you know, my dad, he's a wise man, he told me, Shelly, you're buying trouble if you are worrying about things that haven't even happened yet. Enjoy your life in the moment. And he's exactly right. So I've been trying this. So the next time you wake up in the middle of the night worrying, ask yourself if you can control it. If not, forget it and let it go. If you can control it, think about how you're going to resolve that situation and go back to sleep. I've been, when I purposely ask myself that question, can you control it? And if I say no, no matter what I do, it, 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 I can't choose what the outcome is. It really gives you peace and it lets you go back to sleep. Try to think about things that could go right rather than what could go wrong. I tend to stay awake and I think of plan A, plan B, and plan C if something goes wrong. And usually those things don't even happen. I wish I could recover all the sleep I have lost worrying about things that never happened. It's when you least expect it that things go wrong. And sometimes you're really thinking on your feet when things go wrong. So, don't worry about things you can't control. Let it go. That will give you some peace. Finally, and to me, this is the most important strategy. Remember that happiness is a choice. It creates the most incredible advantages in our lives. Research has proven the human brain is positive. When the human brain is positive, intelligence rises. Resources are not diverted toward combating anxiety. And we are three times more productive. The more you feed your mind with positive thoughts, the more you can attract great things in your life. Listen to that one more time. The more you feed your mind with positive thoughts, the more you can attract great things in your life. These are powerful words. 
But never forget that staying positive doesn't mean that you never have bad days. Staying positive simply means you know there are better days to come. There is not one person in this room who has not survived 100% of their bad days. And we've all had them. How many of you are around during the Orange Frog training? I know that a lot were. Um, many of you know that we are resurrecting those five simple strategies to promote happiness in your life. I'm not going to give them to you, but stay tuned. Tonight, this celebration is especially important because it is about our teachers. It's about you in this room who are not even nominated as the site teacher of the year. It's about acknowledging the significant challenges you have faced over the past few years. Despite these challenges, you have worked tirelessly to ensure that our students are receiving the education they deserve. You have shown incredible dedication, creativity, and resilience. And for that, I am super grateful. However, you must make it a priority to take care of yourself. Our kids need you. And, and this is my mantra, I kind of say it all the time, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So it's up to you, take care of yourself. With that said, it's time to honor these teachers before us who represents the essence of innately teaching with their heart, which leads to greatness in the classroom. But first, before you meet our new candidates for Teacher of the Year, you're going to hear from our 2023 Teacher of the Year, Ms. Sherry Webb, and introducing her is Mr. Adam Leeming. Give them a big round of applause. Hi, thank you, Ms. Eretz. Um, it's my honor to get to introduce our uh, former teacher of the year, Ms. Sherry Webb. Uh, so today I went over to talk to Ms. Webb to say, hey, I'm going to be the one introducing you. And I guess uh, when I walked in the room, she just started confessing all these things that she had been doing. And uh, I said, no, 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 I'm just here to introduce, just give me some good stuff. What can I share? So I won't share all the stuff that you were confessing to um, during your playing time, but that, that's just going to be a sacred. Okay, I won't tell that. We'll stay on that. So. Um, it's my honor to introduce Ms. Webb, um, but before I do that, it, it is kind of cool. I just want to reflect just a moment, if you will, bear with me. This is our superintendent's last teacher of the year banquet, so uh, I, I, I think that's kind of cool, and um, you've done a great job, Shelby, on this. So going back to Ms. Webb, she's a true Wildcat teacher. Oh, yes, thank you. I asked her principal and teachers, she epitomized what it takes to operate with class, grace, and hard work. She sets high expectations and she sees her students perform at high levels as a result. Each student, and I, I see this every year, each student is definitely blessed to have had her as a current or former teacher. She's been in multiple elementary schools across our district, but today she calls Lincoln Elementary home. Her fellow teachers and administrators all love Ms. Webb. Please join me in welcoming to the stage our former Teacher of the Year, Sherry Webb. Good evening. I would like to first start off by saying thank you for allowing me to represent Ponca City as your outgoing District Teacher of the Year for 2023. I remember last year when they called my name. I had barely made it back to my chair after receiving the finalist trophy when Mrs. Eric announced my name as the District Teacher of the Year. I was in complete and utter shock. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I would receive such an honor in my teaching career. This has been a very humbling experience for me, to say the least. This past year, I have dealt with many trials and tribulations, <laughs> both personally and professionally, that would be one of them. <laughs> I decided to change from teaching 
teaching first grade to third grade because, you know, I felt I needed something different. Tutored two students who were struggling in school, and I'm still doing it. Taken on the role of raising my infant granddaughter. That would be her. <laughs> and recently became an army mom to my daughter who joined the National Guard in December, and that came out of left field. Throughout all of these events, I evolved into someone different. I was able to reflect on what kind of teacher my kids needed and the kind of person my family depended on. Taking on the challenge of teaching third grade this school year has been met with many obstacles in itself. Along the way, there have been tears, frustration, encouragement, and celebrations. Each of these students, in their own little ways, have changed how I see myself as a teacher. I feel privileged to have witnessed academic and personal growth in each one of them. In the true wildcat way, they have demonstrated holding that line for each other in good times and in bad. I am even proud to say they held that line for me when I was struggling and they kept telling me, you got this, Mrs. Webb. We learned how to lean on each other and become a family. In closing, I would like to share with you that our students are always changing, and it's up to us as educators to change with them. We wear many hats in our profession, but the main one is teacher. Sometimes we need to step back and ask ourselves the why question. Why did I become a teacher? Well, for me, it's because of the aha moments the connections I make, not just on the first day, but throughout the whole year. And the excitement in not just my eyes, but in their eyes. I get to inspire, impact, enrich, and empower students with knowledge so that they can become lifelong learners. That, to me, is the greatest gift I can share with a child. Thank you. Okay, really quickly, you know it's tradition for our Teacher of the Year celebration that we have a video and that always puts our Teachers of the Year in brainstem when they know they're going to be on video. So our uh, production manager, Mr. Chris Adams, put together an amazing video, so sit back and enjoy. Hello there, my name is Mr. Salazar, I'm the jazz band director at Pole High, and we are the, uh, the Jazz Cats. Thank you. One, two, one, two, ready. <laughs> I like to color coordinate things. 
this. If the top, no, the nine and those. There's the top. Okay, we have nine by four, and we're gonna find the surface area. What equation are we going to put on our board to find the surface area of this top? Mm. The four goes to the other side. The four, four and the nine. nine. So write four times nine on your board. <laughs>
Andy. The Chinese were the only people who knew how to make silk. Does anybody know where silk is made from? What it's what it's made from? Anybody know? Emma. It, it's a, it's from a Yeah, yeah. It's actually made from a silkworm. Yeah, but yeah, it's from a silkworm. But don't they like turn them off? Yeah, they, they turn into like a a moth. Yeah, that's exactly right. They spin a cocoon, and this cocoon has these little fibers that they make silk out of, and so it's made from a silkworm. Very good. Second sentence. Read it again. As agriculture and roads improved, cities and populations grew. Okay. So, one of the developments that helped bring about the, um, uh, the Industrial Revolution is the increase in the size of the cities, right? Because the book just told us that the size of cities and populations grew. <laughs> Yes, that yes, that's the interest. That's what he was talking about. The interest rate that they give you, whatever you've got in the bank, they will give you. Uh, they will return so much in interest to you, which is pretty good. So, what about ATMs? Yeah, you charge you like two to three dollars. If it's not unless your bank, if, yeah, if, say that again. If, if it's not your bank, they'll charge. Yes, if it's not your bank. <laughs> Last two years. I like these. These are these are interesting. Um, so you pick a country. So for ejemplo, Eva, um, hizo Peru a few years ago. Um, so she did Peru, and then we have map Peru map and geography with a description below. So you need at least five sentences on each page. So um, foto y descripción.
right, show me the powers to your brain. Eyes to see, ears to hear, nose to smell, buzz to taste, feel when my skin wrinkles and my brain can now come in. All right, what do we call that? Alphabet. What's on the alphabet? Letters. How many letters do we have? Twenty-six. How many kinds of letters? Two. What are they? but some people hate building in Minecraft. Right? Have fun. Yeah. Do whatever you want. There you go. It's kind of like a sandbox. Minecraft isn't the only sandbox game out there. There's all, there's Everybody plays it differently. Everybody has their own goals. It's like that sandbox. You can't judge. Like, it's not like any other type of playground equipment out there. The swing, you can only do one or two things with that swing. Maybe three if you're really creative, right? It's like the slide. There's only a couple of ways you can play with that slide. You go up, you go down. Right? Maybe even jump off the side if you're being like really like gutsy about it or whatever. But either way, it used to be that all video games were very linear. You go here, you do that, you save the princess, you jump on the little mushroom things every now and then, right? <laughs> In a row. I can see it. Okay, so you've lined up, so you can see the mirror, the um, eagle exactly in there. All right, so Robert, I need you to make a sketch. You all can make sketches on your own paper of what the situation that we have here. So we've got Emily on the left, and okay. It's a crude drawing. What happened? Okay. Okay. So we find out where that is. To the okay, so what measurements are we going to need? Um, the distance between the mirror and the tree, and the distance between Emily and the tree. Okay, so go ahead and put that on your drawing. And <laughs> So now, so the moment you've all been waiting for to meet our Teachers of the Year. But first, I would like to invite Dr. Delana Hawkins, Miss Terry Vogel, uh, Board President Judy Troop, and some very special guests to the stage. Um, I want to take this opportunity to talk about teaching, and, and I hear this a lot from teachers. Sometimes we feel like the profession isn't respected. And that's from very few and far between people. There are some people in this room and in this community who support you no matter what. And we have three representatives from the Ponca City Public School Foundation here tonight. We have Mr. Jeff McKinnon. We have Mrs. Becky Poet, and we have Ms. Trina Lyle Sims, and I'm going to welcome them to the stage. And they're going to be standing here because, guys, I've, I've been on the giving end, or at least the distribution end, of when you have gotten a stipend or a retention bonus, and I'm telling you, it's the biggest hugs and the biggest tears. So I have a surprise for you tonight. 
These people went out and talked to sponsors in this community and they have raised additional funds to give our psych teachers of the years, our finalists, and our 2024 teacher of the year. And guys, it's cold hard cash. Okay, so listen to this. If you are a psych nominee, they are going to hand you $400 as you walk across the stage. It's not a check. There are no taxes taken out. There's no teacher retirement taken out. And guess what? You don't have to spend it in your classroom. <laughs> so what do you think I want you to spend it on? Self-care. Get a massage. Get your nails done. Get a pedicure. Get your hair done. Whatever you need to do. Now, so the finalists, the runner-ups, actually are going to receive $500 in hard, cold cash. Now, I would like to say this because it might have a better effect later, but the 2024 Teacher of the Year is going to receive $1,000. $200. So give it up for the Policy and Public School Foundation and in our community. You guys are respected. So, with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Dye and she's going to tell you how to proceed. All right, so if you are a nominee, we're going to have nominees. Um, you need to line up in the order that you're in the program and you're going to line up right over here on this wall. And then uh, I'm going to keep talking as you, you guys can start moving now. You can go get it. And if you don't know each other, or you just whisper, it's not a big deal, so you can, so you can get in line. Um, and then once we're all set, I will call you up one at a time, and you'll come over. I'm going to stand with Miss Eric and have your picture taken. And then I'm going to, uh, Christy's going to take your picture. She's right down front, so that's how, who you need to look at and smile. And then I'm going to read some great quotes from your students. All right, our first nominee is Miss Megan Brown, fifth grade teacher from Liberty Elementary. All right, Tyson stated, I love Miss Brown as a teacher because she's someone I know I can talk to. I also love her as a teacher because she's very funny. I know sometimes I can joke with her. She's very kind and tries to keep us on track so we don't fall behind in life. She also loves us very much. April said, Miss Brown is one of the best teachers I've had. She has made me always want to come to school. I love the funny moments we have, especially our class singing. I just want to say, Miss Brown feels like a mom to me. She cares. She's a teacher I can talk to and trust. I love you, Miss Brown, and it's going to be very hard to leave this class. If I'm ever having a sad day, you know how to cheer us up. I love you, Miss Brown, to the moon and back. Miss Megan Brown, fifth grade, Liberty Elementary. Our next nominee is Miss Jackie Burton, fourth grade, Roosevelt Elementary. She knows everything about Harry Potter, and she loves it. <laughs> Harper said she's really funny, and she's always putting you in a good mood, even if you're in a bad mood. Miss Jackie Burton, fourth grade, Roosevelt Elementary. <laughs> Miss Molly Carter, Spanish, Ponca City High School. She's very caring and will help in any way she can. She is a positive role model and will be one of my favorite teachers forever. According to Anna, Miss Carter is one of the nicest teachers at Ponca City High School. She's always happy and takes care of each student. I always feel comfortable in her class. She is smart and amazing. 
Ms. Molly Carter, Spanish, Ponca City High School. Miss Jackie Cole, music at Trout Elementary. <laughs> Cash said, we love our flute of flums and Miss Cole so much. And then he said, oops, I'm supposed to call those recorders. <laughs> Michaela declared, I love Miss Cole because she has a great personality, she's a good teacher, helps with a lot of things, and is a great person. She always makes things fun and never gets mad. Miss Jackie Cole, music at Trout Elementary. <laughs> Miss Rachel Didlake, second grade, Union Elementary. is always nice. And when Owen was asked what his favorite thing about Miss Didlake was, he responded with, that is a very, that's very hard to answer because I like everything about her. Miss Rachel Didlake, second grade, Union Elementary. <laughs> Miss Emily Greenhagen, pre-kindergarten, Washington pre k She keeps us safe and lets us play outside and inside. And Kaysen exclaimed, her got the teacher award because her is the best. <laughs> Miss Emily Greenhagen, pre-kindergarten, Washington pre Miss <laughs> Jan Mallory, Wildcat Academy. she shows her affection by throwing marshmallows at us. <laughs> and Daniel declared, she is so caring. She gave me an Algebra 2 help book when I was struggling with math. She also made sure that the library book I wanted was ordered. Miss Jan Mallory, Wildcat Academy. <laughs> Miss Diane Pendleton, Special Ed Language Arts at Palm City High School. According to Daniel, Miss Pendleton is a good teacher. She really makes you work. And Askaya exclaimed, Miss Pendleton is a really good teacher and I wish she could stay with us forever. Me too. <laughs> Miss Diane Pendleton, Language Arts, Palm City High School. Miss Beth Post, first grade, Lincoln Elementary. And just as a side note, it's my understanding that Mrs. Troop was her teacher. Yeah, that's kind of fun. And Miss Mallory, we didn't hear that. She said Miss Mallory also taught her touch math. So there you go. So Gabriel responded, Miss Post helps us when, and we are on hard math like money and stuff. Pennies, quarters, and dimes. Now regular math is easy. I'm on third grade math now and my writing journal is perfect. Uh, that was Gabriel. Okay. And Blaine said, Miss Post has the class say, finger spaces, capital letters, punctuation, and it makes sense every time we write. She says lots of fun stuff all the time, and I also like her curly hair. <laughs> she does. Uh, Miss Beth Post, first grade. <laughs> Mr. Ryan Taylor, U.S. History, East Middle School. According to Destiny, Coach Taylor is really, really funny and kind. He always helps when we need it, and he gives us second chances. We always have to do our work, but he's not rude about things ever. He's very straightforward. And Katie exclaimed, well, of course he's the teacher of the year because he's the 
best. I see him as someone who's always there for me and always encouraging to everyone. His jokes are funny. Once he said, you're making my head hurt. I, knew, I know you guys are too loud right now because I can clearly hear you and I'm deaf. <laughs> Mr. Ryan Taylor, U.S. History, he's Minister. Ms. Lindsay Wilburn, Special Education, Woodlands Elementary. Torrance said, I like Miss Wilburn because she is obsessed with hedgehogs. Her room is decorated with them and they make me smile. And Delaney reported, Miss Wilburn does not make lessons boring. She teaches you while having fun. Miss Lindsay Wilburn, Special Education, Woodlands Elementary. Mr. Jamie Wiley, 7th grade geography at West Middle School. Roman said, he's cool. I also like his Star Trek decorations. And Katie Jo responded, he's funny and has interesting facts to keep us interested. Mr. Jamie Wiley, 7th grade geography, West Middle School. Uh, next, we're going to introduce our three finalists, and uh, you guys are going to stay on the stage instead of going back to your seat. So after, uh, so you'll just kind of after you'll just go through and wait on the stage. So our first finalist is Miss Darcy Austin, kindergarten. And also <laughs> Jason said she is nice and reads good books. And Zane exclaimed, I like when Mrs. Austin gives us papers and snacks. The finalist, Miss Darcy Austin, kindergarten, and Darcy Miller. <laughs> finalist, Mr. Jeremiah Bell, seventh grade geography at West Middle School. <laughs> Chase reported, I like how he's always inclusive and makes all the lessons fun. And Maritza said, he keeps it entertaining. He's also loud, in a good way, keeping everyone awake. <laughs> Mr. Jeremiah Bell, 7th grade geography, West <laughs> Finalist, Ms. Jill Klein, math at Ponga City High School. According to Talia, Ms. Klein is an amazing teacher because she is kind and patient. I always know I can count on her. Audrey said Ms. Klein is a great teacher because she always makes sure that everyone understands the topic and can do it on their own before she moves on to the next topic. Ms. Jill Klein, math, Ponce City High School. Okay, contrary to popular belief, I have no clue who the Teacher of the Year is. I make them hide the check from me, I make them hide everything. So, we are all going to be excited. I think it's on a citation down here in the podium, Christy, okay? The 2024 Ponca City Public Schools Teacher of the Year is Miss Darcy Austin! Um, my family, first of all, um, 
They um, support me all the time. They're always um, there with me. Avery's always helping me at school. Tyler's always helping me at school. And my husband, even he comes and helps me at school reluctantly, but he does come do that. Um, and also would like to thank my um, awesome team at Garfield. Um, we're the best, and I just I just love being there, and it's it's my home, my second home. Um, I love all my kids. I love all the kids at Garfield, even the ones that are not my kids anymore. They're still my kids, even when they um, go on to first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And anyway, I'm just I'm just overwhelmed and I'm shocked. So thank you all very much. <laughs> It's the teacher that makes the biggest difference. And, and I say tonight, you know that Ponca City Wildcats hold that line. In everything we do, we hold that line on the field of play, in the classroom, whatever we do. And guys, you are going to have to hold that line for your emotional well-being and take a moment to relax and smell the roses. So for you to hold that line, for our students, you have to hold that line for yourself. Take care of yourself. Take self-care. I appreciate you coming tonight. Guys, 
this is the hardest job there is every single day, but it is rewarding every single day. So thanks for all you do, and congratulations to our Teachers of the Year tonight. Have a wonderful evening.